Let us consider the following Excel input file in which employees are given first priority, second priority, third and fourth priorities of programming languages that they are aware of. For an example, employee A has given C language as the first priority, meaning that he or she is good at C language when compared to other programming languages. The same employee A has given Python as the second priority, PHP as the third one, fourth priority as Java. In the same way, every employee in an organization, let us imagine that they have given priorities. Maybe like company wants to use this information to set the projects for those employees who are good at their respective skills. Now, let's imagine that your project manager has given this input file and he or she wants to convert this input file to this format. In this format, we need information with respect to programming language. But in the input file, we have the information with respect to employee. To convert the same input file to output file here, I need to use data filters in the input file and I need to write the employees who have set the first priority as C language. And I want to know whomever the employees who have set C language as second priority, third priority, fourth priority and so on. I hope you got the point. In order to generate such kind of output file from this input file is not so easy without the help of programming language. I'll prove here itself. With the existing features of Excel, it is merely impossible for us to solve this problem in case if data is big. Somehow in this input file, we have very few number of records. Let us imagine in case if you have very large number of records with thousands of employees working with 10 or above priorities, then it's very hard to convert this input file to the desired output file. Let's see how this conversion happens without the help of programming language just by using Excel features itself. Set a data filter for each priority and I want to know who are the employees set the C language as the first priority. So I'm selecting only C language here and I came to know only A and G. I'll get back to output here and I'll write A comma G or the employees whose first priority is C language. Again, I'll get back to input file and I'll change the selection to Java. These are the employees who kept Java as the first priority, B, H. And to know the set of employees who have kept Python, I'll select Python alone and then R language and then JSP. This is just for first priority. Then in order to fill second priority, I need to do the same task. Same task for third priority, same task for fourth priority. It's quite hectic thing for very few number of records. Just imagine in case if you have thousand number of employees. Here is a place where you should understand you need to take help of programming language. In case the same data is available in two dimensional array. I'll take one single dimensional array additionally to store all the languages uniquely. I have roughly five languages here. C, Java, Python, R language, JSP, PHP, hardly five to six languages. So each language I'll compare with the first priority wherever there is a match. For an example, C language is the first language. So I'll compare C language here, C language here. Wherever there is a comparison hit, I'll write A comma G. Using for loop, we can do this activity with the help of programming language. That is why it is quite important for us to load Excel data into two dimensional format or in one dimensional format to perform our operations. In this video, I'm not going to tell you the program which converts the same input file to this format. Rather, I'll concentrate on teaching you how to load Excel data to the program and how to load programs data to the Excel. If you learn this concept, you can perform any complex operation on Excel data because Excel features are quite limited when compared to programming language features. We don't have looping concept in Excel, but we have looping concept in Java and we have looping concept in Python. That's why we'll take the help of programming language to solve these kind of complex operations. To perform successful read and write operations using Java, we need to follow these five simple instructions. Number one, download two JAR files. One is POI OO XML and other is POI. The first one is meant to perform read and write operations on XSLX files. Microsoft related Excel files and second one is meant for traditional Microsoft Excel files with extension XSL. These two you can download from Apache's website. Once after downloading these two jar files, you need to add these two jar files to your NetBeans IDE or Eclipse IDE library. It's very easy to identify library in your Eclipse or NetBeans. Go there and simply add these two jar files. Once after adding jar files, you need to add dependency to your project XML file. In case of NetBeans, you might be having pom.xml file. 
you need to do some updations there. What kind of updations have to be done that I am going to show you in very short. In case if you don't use any IDE, then simply copy those two jar files in JDK lib folder and set the class path to jar files. In case if you don't know how to set class paths, then watch my videos on Java Sowlets. Finally, write the program, compile it and execute it. Now let's look at the dependency file and program. This is the dependency file. For your convenience, what I do is that this dependency text file, program and what are the excel files on which I am going to perform read and write operations. Putting all together, I will make a zip file and uh, you can download them right from the description of channel. We need to add the following dependency to the pom.xml file which will be under our project directory. Now let's look at the program. It's quite simple program which has two functions. One is read from excel and other is write into excel. To perform these two operations successfully we need to import the following four packages. First two java io and uh, util are traditionally available in jdk library. These two packages are exclusively from POI jar files whatever we have downloaded. This is a class read write excel in which there is a main function. Inside main function there are two function calls made. One is read from excel which takes one single argument that is nothing but the input file parameter. Number two write into excel which again takes the input parameter of excel file in which I am going to write the data. We need to create two instances. One is excel book and excel sheet. These are the classes that are available in the jar files that we have downloaded. Create a simple iterator to iterate each record in the excel file. Write a simple loop to iterate each record, get the cell value and print it. That's it. Now we'll see how to perform write operation. Create a book and sheet instance. I have created two simple strings to store the person names and cities and I have initialized the names of the persons as well as cities of the persons. I have taken two simple records. Person name is Sachin and Sachin's city is Mumbai. Number two, person's name is Kohli and Kohli's city is Delhi. To write the information that I have stored in the array, I have created a simple for loop which iterates exactly two times which depends upon the total number of rows that we are creating in the excel file. In our case, we are just creating two records of the persons that I have shown just before. Each time we get into the loop, we are going to create a row. For each row, we are going to create two cells, one for name and one for city, represented as cell 0 and cell 1. Each time a cell is created, we are assigning value by using a function called as set cell value. Finally, we write data using file output string. If all the above steps are successful, then we should see write is successful on the console output screen. These are the two excel files that I am going to use, sample read.xsl and sample write.xsl. Let me open them. I am going to read this following information, name of the person and city of the person. And this information has to be printed on the console output screen. It means that successfully we performed read operation. This file is used to perform write operation. Initially it is empty. After executing the program, this file should contain person names and cities. Now let's execute this program in NetBeans and check the output. First of all, I'll show you where to add jar files. Go to tools and here you can find libraries. Here is a place where you can add jar files. So simply browse your jar file and add it. And number two, you need to add dependency. Go to project files. This is pom.xml file. This is the dependency that you need to add. Simply copy paste the dependency that I have provided. Read write excel. This is my java file. Let's execute now. Run file. We got the output. Peter Washington, Samuel, London, Ria, Dubai. Read is successful. It means that our program has successfully opened excel file and read the content and printed on the screen. And in the last line you can see write is successful. It means that our program has successfully written data to the excel file. Now let's open the excel file and check whether the data is written correctly or not. This file is used for a write operation. Before execution this file was empty. Now let's see whether we got the data or not. We got data successfully. You can see that Sachin Mumbai is a city name. Kohli Delhi is a city name. That's all guys.